Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about growing tomatoes in containers. The two keys that you really have to pay attention to. We'll take a look at this plant and assess what's going on. This is a 100 gallon root pouch. I sell these at my seed shop and even with all this soil, I have two broccoli plants in there, I've removed one, I have onions in there, and I have a tomato plant. Last 14 days, we haven't had any rain. Temperatures are getting into the 80s. Really warm for this time of year here in Maryland Zone 7. What you have to pay attention to for containers versus ground planted tomatoes, peppers, and other vegetables is that the root systems, when you have mature plants, this is mature broccoli, I've already harvested this crown out of this plant. This is a large tomato plant that's about, you know, maybe almost three feet tall. Root systems are well established. It, they are sucking the water out of this root pouch, out of the soil, just about in a day. It's using up all the nutrients. So when your plants get to this size, you're going to have to be watering more frequently. I'll talk about that. More importantly, you're going to have to be feeding, feed them with a water-soluble fertilizer. Water-soluble means that the N, P, and K is immediately available to your plants. You mix it with water, pour it into the root system, it pulls in the N, P, and K. You're gonna have to do that every 10 to 14 days when your plants are getting to size. Maybe even a little bit more often when you have tomatoes forming. This is an early girl, I believe, and I have tomatoes coming up on this plant. It's not quite the green color that I want. It's a little bit pale, and that's from me not watering it enough with this lack of rain, increase in temperature, mature plants, I have to water it more frequently. It was watered yesterday, I'm gonna water it again today. I'm going to give it the water-soluble fertilizer. I will show you how to do that. At the bottom, the leaves are starting to turn yellow. There is some disease on the bottom leaves. When a plant is starving for nutrients or having issues with water, it will stop taking care of the leaves on the bottom. They're gonna naturally yellow, they're gonna get weaker, they're gonna be more susceptible to disease. You're gonna see patterns on there and it's gonna be sending the resources to the fruit. That's the goal is to have fruit create seeds and to the upper growth. So this plant basically needs more water and needs more food. So let's get to the water soluble feeding. If you get in close, you can see tomatoes are forming this kind of pattern is just a plant that needs food and water more consistently. The weaker leaves are gonna start having active fungi show up on them because they can't really defend them off. I'm gonna keep an eye on this plant to make sure that this active fungus, and you can tell it's active, Let's see if I can get a little bit closer, when you have the brown concentric rings but the yellow halo is around there, that means the fungus is active. I might hit this with a hydrogen, hydrogen peroxide spray today I think I'm going to wait till I give it more water, more nutrients, and just see how the plant responds. But until I really get this plant to where it needs to be with a feeding routine and a watering routine, the leaves at the bottom especially are going to be really susceptible to turning yellow and getting problems on them. So first thing, you don't come out here and spray and keep things status quo. That spray is not going to do much because the first thing is the fertilizer and consistent watering. The tomato plant has been in here for almost seven weeks. Broccoli, probably a little bit longer. Now the broccoli looks pretty good. Different plants respond differently to the amounts of water in the soil and the broccoli just does pretty well with what it's been getting. It also likes the cooler weather. When the cooler weather was here, that also can damage your, to your tomato plant just a little bit. However, again, function of not being fed for over seven weeks, I kind of missed it. And then the watering got messed up because I'm used to having rain here regularly through May and June and we were just not getting that. So in the container is two gallons of water. It is just actually mixed up with some AgroThrive. I recommend using AgroThrive. It's a wonderful organic water fertilizer. You can find information in my video description. I always want to show people how much to use. In this case, where I consider it an emergency, I'm not, you know, just doing a quick application. So I am going to pour a good gallon right in at the base. That's going to bring the N, P, and K to the plant right away. Notice I haven't watered yet. And we are really just soaking in the base. Tomatoes send out surface roots. So I'm getting really this whole half of the container. And that is just about one gallon of water. 
that's going to supply plenty of nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus to the plant. First step, I want to get the feed into there. So next I'm going to come in and water this. I want to show you how I do that too because I want a deep soaking. That was a pretty good soaking in that the fish emulsion in the water is getting down pretty deep. But I want to soak this entire space. And then I'm going to come back and water it again with a little bit of fertilizer. Really mixing in the N, P, and K throughout the soil. A lot of people ask, should I remove the damaged leaves? Should I remove the leaves that have disease on there? And the answer is you can. There's no real benefit to the plant if you remove them. This is not an outbreak that I would be worried about spreading across my plant. I really believe the disease that's showing up is because it's on weak leaves. I also don't feel like I need to prune it all off. I'm going to just leave them on there, not put the plant through any additional stress of losing leaves. When the plant is green, looks better, I'll prune again and I'll remove some of these leaves on the bottom. I mean, generally speaking, again, consistent watering, the water soluble fertilizer, this guy will green up, it will be okay, and then I will take care of the leaves on the bottom as the plant gets a little bit taller. I will keep an eye on things. At massive outbreak, just FYI, like you can see some of the fungus on the leaves. There'd be like, there would be like 30 spots on this leaf. All the leaves would be covered if there was really a massive outbreak. And that would be a point of concern. On a weakened plant, I really don't worry too much about it. As far as, again, removing the leaves, if you feel better, remove them. The diseases are around, they're going to show up, and they do show up on weak leaves first. I'm just not worried about that disease spreading across the plant. If you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll show you how I use hydrogen peroxide spray, other treatments on my tomato plants, how I manage pests and disease throughout the entire garden. But the whole idea is slow and steady, give the plants what they need to correct the problem, and this plant again, I'm going to stress one more time, needs water and water soluble fertilizer. I am concentrating on a tomato plant because out of all the plants in my root pouches, this is the plant that looks a little bit yellow, has the yellow leaves, some disease on the bottom, so it really needs the water soluble fertilizer. If a plant looks like it's struggling, you want to soak the base in like I showed you. The broccoli over here, probably I'll give it a half a gallon when I'm done with the video, and then I'll water this side in. I just want to show you how much water you want to put over here. And sometimes people just water like this. That doesn't do a whole lot. That's going to get to the surface roots on a hot day, you know, within that day that water is going to be used up. You really want to take the time, and I like showing people the amount of water. And you could pretend that this was just like a 20 gallon pouch, and this is what you would be doing for that whole space. In a 20 gallon container, you want to plant one indeterminate type tomato. In this 100 gallon, you can plant a lot more plants because you have more growing room. Again, plants grown in containers are very different than plants grown in the ground, where they can send out deeper roots, get to some of the water, you know, lower in the earth. There's a lot more nutrients in there. Containers really is a whole different beast. So that's pretty good for an initial soaking, mixing in the water soluble fertilizer, getting it down further. I want to continue on. I want to make sure I'm getting water all the way to the bottom of the soil here. Really soaking it in. This will get everything back on track. I'll wait, you know, three to five days, see if this tomato is greening up, seeing if the plant's greening up. If it's not, if it looks like it's struggling with the disease, that's when I'm going to hit it with the spray, just as a prevention. So now that I've soaked it in pretty well, just another quick splash of the water soluble fertilizer. Now I know that there's plenty of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in there. So I have maybe a half a gallon left in here. These are pretty healthy looking broccoli plants. So I'm just going to pour some right in, really at the base around there. You know, maybe get some from this side. So all in all, in a 100 gallon container, this is about two gallons worth of water soluble fertilizer. And you can see it's running to different places. And then I would do a nice soak in on this side and just hold it there for a while. Let that water get in. And overall, you know, the plant looks good, not great, but the 
nitrogen will help green it up. Lots of tomatoes forming in different areas. And even some larger ones down there. So don't forget your, about your plants. You really have to give them that extra water and that extra fertilizer when you're starting to get large and really begin producing. We noticed the amount of water and I'd like to show that on video because the question I get more, most often is how do I water and how much do I water my plants? So that is set up now for success. Again, I'll come back and assess in three to five days check out the tomato plant. This guy's already been pruned and taken care of. I have lots of videos on that. The soil was set up well in the beginning, but after six weeks, seven weeks of growing, I was slow in getting the water soluble to the plant, and I was really doing a poor job with the watering. Good rule of thumb, in about 100 gallons, two gallons of water soluble fertilizer is perfect. I have tomato plants in other places. Let me just walk over there. These guys look better because they were put in later and I actually hit them and took care of them a little bit more. That's a 20 gallon container. Nice green growth. That's the color we want that tomato plant to be. However, the other one was put in earlier so that I got tomatoes sooner. That's why you see tomatoes on that plant already. 20 gallon pot, about one gallon of the water soluble fertilizer will work. Same idea with the soaking. I can see the surface is dry. So I'm gonna come through, water all of my fabric pots. The whole key to success for growing in fabric pots or containers, any kind of container, whenever you're not in the earth, is more frequent watering and when the plants get larger, more frequent applications of the water soluble fertilizer. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and when in doubt, give your plants and containers a little more of that water-soluble nitrogen that should green them up and keep them growing. Thanks for watching.